What's up guys, it's Maxwell and I'm bringing you a war recap video of the scrim we had this weekend against Cold September. So as you can see, we were able to come away with the victory 113 to 110, so definitely very nice right there. Um, this was a 40 versus 40, both sides had um, 5 town 11s and then uh, 13 town hall 10s. We have a lot of town hall 10 attacks to watch today, um, but we are gonna start off with two town hall knights because I didn't want to leave out the town hall knights entirely, although we had uh, some very nice town hall 10 action, so we're gonna kick things off with Vieto right here on number 40. Um, I actually uh, was involved in the town hall 9 planning once again a little bit, and I was looking at this base for the longest time with one of our town hall 9s, but um, we couldn't really find a very good approach, and uh, this is definitely why I uh, yeah, really liked watching Vieto's attack, because he found uh, the key to this base, obviously. So the mortars uh, definitely made it a little bit tough uh, with uh, the funneling or the targeting of the golems in this base, but he took out that initial mortar with a loon over there, so it was very nice. His king actually ended up walking, but he managed to funnel almost all of his bowlers into the core, so uh, that's ov obviously always a good thing. The golems actually were healed up in this attack, so that was good. The king was doing some tanking over there at the top um, and got some trash buildings out of the way. And that's of course uh, then nice for cleanup. It was able to tank, uh, the king was able to tank for a couple of loons as well. And other than that, the kill squad just pretty much uh, waltzed their way through the base. A little bit of a strange base. Um, I know that one of our plans was to hawk this backside of the base as well, but Vieto either forgot to drop a golem or planned for this golem to tank the backside, but I think he actually planned for it because um, some pretty nice value for the king right there, tanking a couple uh, for the golem, tanking a couple of cannons and the king, and uh, then his hawks were able to destroy everything. Uh, we were sort of scared of a lot of spring traps in this area, and actually looked like there were quite a few over there, but um, not as bad as we would have expected. A um, lot of damage out of the base already, so very nice triple with swag as well by Vieto. So nicely done right here on number 40. And um, yeah, sort of similar to how we would have attacked it, but then we went for another base and uh, yeah, ended up failing that one. So um, anyways, that's going to be it for this one. So nicely done by Vieto. And we're going to move on up to number um, 33, where we have um, Daniel aka Moritz coming in right here with a nice attack as well. So Lava on the Clan Castle, he lures out the Clan Castle with a giant right here. And then the Lava is going to be lured all the way up top by an Archer. So an Archer is working over there. <coughs> We're going to 4x through the beginning because the action is going to start down at the bottom. With both heroes, King is using his ability right away. He obviously wants to get uh, uh, that uh, working very quickly down here because the Lava Hound is definitely going to flow uh, flat back down whenever it has killed the Archer. So... We're gonna see the Lava on approaching, there it goes. Uh, so uses Queen ability just uh, to be able to have her um, die with the most uh, value possible. Um, skeleton Traps actually set to ground to this base, which is nice. And the rest of this tech is um, just um, three Lava Hounds and then obviously a bunch of Balloons. And we have two Heal Spells, three Haste Spells and another Poison Spell left in the back as well, which is probably not going to be needed for this one, because, as I already said, the Skeleton Traps were set to ground for this base. So, um, that one Balloon in the Heal Spell just taking out that Wizard Tower, really cool value for that one Balloon. And then he's going to Lalo straight to this first Sweeper. A uh, couple of uh, people would probably be afraid to Lalo into a Sweeper, but it's just going to allow him the perfect passing for the rest of the space, and, uh, yeah, taking everything out. Although, um, there he goes. Uh, into the Tesla farm with the second heal spell that he has brought and the hay spell is also really valuable on top of the Tesla farm. Taking stuff out quickly is always good. And um, yeah, there it goes, couple of backhand loons, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Nice little loon right here by uh, Daniel on this space, very nicely done. Um, also a nice performance from him again this war. Also on tunnel 10 level, we are going to get to that um, right after this. And um, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. As I said, two wizards in the back. Obviously not going to place them because doesn't want the Lava Hound to do crazy stuff and maybe pop um, late in the raid. So yeah, sometimes it's good not to use your wizards. Um, he used them in the very end when the attack was pretty much already over. Okay, so that was that triple. 
And then we are going to move right on up to the 10 versus 10 action because we actually had 7 10 versus 10 triples this war. So uh, starting right off at number 18 we have Tamo aka the Arabian guy coming in right here with um, Suicide Heroes, 2 Lava Hounds, 3 Lava Hounds, 1 in the Clan Castle and then there are just uh, 32 balloons. So very very balloon heavy, gonna take out one of those air defenses and uh, obviously gonna have to work with the Queen somehow but the Queen is very close to the outside this base which certainly makes her very vulnerable and she's gonna attack the king relatively soon I think at least I thought I watched this attack so yeah she's gonna attack the king now that's gonna aggro the queen over and um, yeah have his queen take out enemy queen so there she goes enemy queen out of the way very very cheap way to deal with enemy queen and that of course allows the uh, possibility to uh, spam a massive loot not spam but use a massive amount of balloons to destroy the space so couple of haste spells early um, allowing the perfect path into that inferno tower i know that i sometimes struggle to uh, reach these inferno towers that are in these little islands um, yeah because they are obviously meant to be uh, tough to reach so he did that very good in this case so i can definitely uh, probably pick something up from this raid and learn from my own attacks I um, hope you guys can as well. There goes a Rage spell, and this ended up being an overkill converging on that cute level 1 inferno down there. But of course this was the lowest tunnel 10, so no surprise to uh, see this one. By the way, I only said uh, Scrim early on, so this was an arranged and friendly war. So we meant to match up with Cold September. Had matched up with those guys before, they're great sports, always very fun to war Cold September. So um, yeah, um, definitely... Uh, a planned one and uh, Tamu was able to wrap this one up for the first of seven Tenvi tents um, converging on a town hall up there so the uh, threat of 99% one star was there but not for long <laughs> um, yeah so next one was uh, actually Nati coming in right here with the Tenvi ten this time we have a couple of uh, bowlers and a golem in there and we are already moved up uh, to level 3 infernos so you guys can see a very very uh, yeah quick uh, progression right here but the point defense is a little bit low still so uh, sort of um, mostly town hall 9 point defense see a couple of cannons that are upgraded or one cannon I should say but yeah other than that I think it's town hall 9 point defense which uh, of course makes it a little bit easier than um, with higher level point defense obviously I think that a lot of guys actually enjoy uh, going up against level 3 infernos and lower level point defense rather than level 2 uh, infernos and higher level point defense so um, yeah that could definitely make it f make for uh, a little bit of an easier triple uh, but don't want to take anything away from Nati because the attack of course still was very good otherwise you're not gonna triple we actually saw a couple of different clan castles from cold september so not everything was a lava hound and a balloon we had this one right here with the wavy baby and the bit uh, the <laughs> the witch <laughs> and uh, we had another baby CC higher up I know that I um, was looking at attacking the space and we ended up 10v turning that one as well so um, yeah definitely a couple of different CC's so they tried to surprise us but of course uh, whenever the first surprise is gone um, and we had a couple of scouts this war luckily um, yeah it's a little bit easier to three star these bases than when there's no lava out in the clan castle uh, yeah, so coming in with the Laloon from 3 o'clock over here, heal spell right after the Inferno, keeping everything alive. I think he caught every single Balloon with that heal spell, so that was definitely very, very good. No spells left at this point, and we still have a Wizard Tower lurking over there, but uh, the Balloons were able to do it in this case. They all swung up top. Those two distraction balloons maybe could have come a little bit earlier, but luckily the wizard tower is close enough to not be able to uh, take down all of those balloons. That's going to be the triple right here by Nati, so very nicely done over here. And uh, yeah, nice amount of cleanup left as well. Wrapping up for this was the second 10v10, I believe. I'm already losing count, guys. Um, <laughs> no, that's a bit uh too much okay so we have matt up next matt on number 16 right here um you can see that uh, the, the point defense is definitely leveling up and the higher we go uh, we see a couple of wizard towers that are already the uh, first um tunnel 10 level we of course now have new two new uh wizard tower levels at tunnel 10 compared to tunnel 9 with the formerly uh, tunnel 11 wizard towers being moved down but these uh, wizard towers are definitely the um 
the first level you unlock a Tamo 10, so a little bit leveled up. We see an up leveled X Expo as well, two leveled Expos actually. So, as I said, point defense getting stronger on this base. There goes the wall break. I remember that. Oh, this was the funny queen uh, on this attack. I watched this live. And the queen is actually looking like she's gonna swing around, but you're gonna have to keep a close eye on the queen, guys. The king is finishing his suicide mission. Take a look at the queen. Now, the queen is taking out the gold storage, and after that, she's gonna target the air defense because that was the closest building. So, she's gonna move in, get the air defense, obviously, get the inferno tower after, but that's not all. The queen is not done yet. Lalo is gonna start from 3 o'clock, by the way. Uh, she's gonna get the expo as well because the expo was the next uh, closest building so she's gonna step up get one air targeting expo out of the way as well so um, very smart queen over here huge value for her definitely very very nice and we were uh, laughing uh, like crazy when this attack happened and we were on voice chat live because um, yeah sometimes you do get a little bit fortunate with the queen's AI and her targeting so in this case Matt definitely got a little bit fortunate and that uh, obviously helped him to wrap up this attack. There goes Rage Spell, Heal Spell, Skelly Spell on the Queen. Obviously the Heal Spell doesn't really help out the Skeletons because they are one-shotted, but uh, the Balloons, uh, oops, sorry, the Balloons were able to tank a little bit longer for that. And um, yeah, the Skelly Spell ended up killing not only Queen, but also the King. So um, no funny business with uh, the Balloons chasing around the King in the end of an attack, <laughs> but uh, he would have had enough troops to, troops to clean this one up anyway. So Nice job to Matt getting another 10v10. He's been getting quite a few 10v10s lately, so definitely performing very nicely as well, as our Town Hall 10s are in general at this point in time, because they just put in the effort, and uh, whenever you put in the effort, you uh, tend to get rewarded at some point as well, and that they are. So a big shout out to our Town Hall 10s, because um, at this point in time, they are uh, absolutely crushing it. Um, yeah, so up next we have Lee, aka Oscar, this is his account coming in right here, who actually was able to grab a 10v10 six-pack this war, if he's going to start. Um, so yeah, there we go, the queen is coming in with a couple of balloons for that uh, arch tower over there. Gonna be able to charge uh, this inferno tower uh, without using any healers, so that's nice. There go the war breakers, they crack open that uh, section over there. Funnel is being created. Um, Queen now taking out an elixir collector, gonna move on to the wizard tower and gold storage up next. That's good, there goes the baby dragon uh, while uh, or whenever the queen is locked. Uh, the wizard tower was locked into the queen, he placed the baby dragon. For some extended funneling, the queen is gonna step up and um, get the wizard uh, an archer tower out of the way as well. Also a cannon and I don't remember if he got this air defense, but yes, so he got it as well. That's nice, the air defense. Is a little bit lower on HP than those cannons are, so uh, nice that he was able to get that out of the way. And then we come in with a relatively heavy, or I would say a mid-sized kill squad over here. Um, jump spell. His goal is to get the queen out of the way. Poison spell for the enemy balloon is going to have that one uh, rendered worthless. Couple of bowlers actually around the outside. Funnel was a little bit sketchy, actually only one bowler ended up walking in the end. The funnel was a little bit sketchy uh, to create in this space, so... Um, yeah, they definitely made it a little bit tougher, but um, ended up getting the queen, which is of course all that he needed. And then we have Laloon coming in over here. Um, very nice targeting for the Laloon, very nice pathing for the rest of this attack. And um, yeah, that's gonna make for our next 10 versus 10 triple. So, very good attack right here by Oscar. Usually, he has to hit Town Hall 11s as well, but this war, um, we had a couple of guys who. Uh, didn't have too too much time, so we ended up having those guys hit the town on 11s, and that actually freed up Oscar to go be able to go 10 versus 10 with um, both of his attacks, and it ended up working out very nicely for us because he got the 10v10 six pack. So very nicely done to him. Uh, I would give the MVP of the war award to him this war because yeah, 10v10 six pack, not not much more you can ask for. Um, obviously. Uh, within this scrim, I mean it was a scrim, was a fun war against Cold September, but I definitely know that we were not using our uh, A plus bases, and uh, these guys probably weren't either. So um, that definitely makes it a bit easier to get a lot of 10 v 10s. So I don't want to um, rank this anywhere up uh, uh, CWL invite base level, but um, definitely not a weak bases either. But uh, yeah, maybe. A little bit softer than you would usually expect in a real 
um, CWL war. So um, that definitely makes it a bit easier to get a lot of 10v10s, but still um, 7 10v10s, you don't get those without um, putting effort in. And uh, I can definitely say that our 10s put a lot of effort in because I see what they do on Discord with the planning and all that good stuff. A couple of people were online for uh, hours and hours and hours. I can't even count uh, the hours or I cannot uh, uh, make an educated estimation on that. But definitely a lot of hours during this Sunday they were on Discord and they were planning. So in this case we are going to have the Queen Walk uh, joining up with the Kill Squad. So it's a pretty cool attack I think. Um, I remember watching this one live. Uh, I actually saw a live fail on this one and then uh, this attack succeeded with the same plan, so um, definitely very cool plan. Queen had to use her ability relatively early because she was charging this first Inferno Tower. The Clan Castle is sort of funny with minions and balloons over here. No threat whenever you have the poison spell down in time and um, Oscar definitely hit for had for his second hit <laughs> over here. That's what I meant to say. Couple of late minions coming out of the Clan Castle but the Queen has already stepped into the right direction over here. She's gonna work her way up. Um, as you can see, the funnel has been created at 12 o'clock. Um, uh, let's zoom up a little bit. Can I do that? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, old and glitchy iPhone. By the way, I hope I can install my capture card today, so that would definitely... Oh, God. That would definitely make uh, recording a little bit easier for me again and uh, hopefully also uh, even improve the quality. Uh, but for now, we're going to have to live with this uh, glitchy old iPhone and my old MacBook. So, um, King and Valkyrie is actually coming in for the kill squad, so no bowlers. That's um, something different as well, so definitely liked watching that. And the kill squad just got some really nice work done on this base, um, destroying everything in the core. A giant was able to tank for those initial four balloons, so no lava needed for that. Definitely saved some army space. Uh, army camp space over there and then um, a lava, two lava hounds came in uh, with um, all those balloons in behind uh, actually going into the sweeper so that was a little bit tough and he didn't have free spell for the last air defense and sweeper because obviously he had to burn some spells on the very heavy kill squad but enough balloons left and no splash defense um, to be able to take everything out so that is the six pack for Oscar right there as I already said very very nicely done uh, by the way, I have lost count at this point. I don't know how many attacks we watched. Uh, I think this must be the 4th or 5th 10v10. I don't want to miss anything, but we were sort of going through from bottom to top, so I hope we are going to be able to get it all. Um, here goes the next one. We have Niklas coming in. Niklas 60 <laughs> on uh, Trap Lee of Cold September. And this one is uh, a queen charge actually with 20 balloons. So queen is already in with a wizard up top. There go the healers. The wizard is creating the funnel for queen to step uh, over towards the left, aka 9 o'clock in this case. And um, yeah, queen is gonna uh, be a little bit slow in the beginning or uh, yeah, just be slowed down by those uh, heavy elixir storages that definitely take a while to chew through. So yeah, she's doing work on that. Gonna take out the cannon right after, and then she's gonna step up to the bomb tower and the air defense. Um, yeah, so um, whenever this uh, meta started with the um, anti laloon bases and air defenses towards the outside, I know that I was predicting a lot of queen walks, and we uh, haven't seen too, too many uh, yet. And that is, of course, uh, because of the defensive clan castles that have lava hounds oftentimes, so um, that makes it for actually really unlucky with the giant bomb over there and those um, wall breakers. Um, yeah, so the lava mounts in the clan castle definitely make it uh, difficult to queen charge bases, but in this case we have lava on the clan castle and we have Niklas uh, deciding to do it anyway. So um, sometimes that can work out. One wizard has been sent in at this point. He was improvising a little bit because he meant to crack open that next section of wall with his wall breakers as well, but as you guys were able to see they all died, so that was unfortunate. Um, but uh, just decided to roll with it anyways and see what he could get. Actually, we had a very good call by Bucket on the Rage Bell that just went down on the Queen. She was about to die and he called that Rage Bell in voice chat, I remember, because I was in that uh, chat room as well. And um, yeah, actually uh, saved the Queen over there before she eventually got locked onto the Inferno Tower and then got killed anyways, but took down a couple more important buildings and before she uh, eventually died, and that was definitely uh, very important for this attack as well. 
everything converging on that last inferno tower at this point it was uh, looking sort of 50 50 but ended up just having enough steam to get it out of the way the lava on actually did not pop so um, that was not ideal um, but um, yeah the archer tower luckily able to help out pop the lava on last second three more minions in the back for cleanup and uh, able to wrap it up in the end so um, that was the triple on this base troll tesla um, we actually both bucket and i both missed that troll tesla uh, but luckily enough time to still wrap this one up um, that was my attack and then we have um, daniel for our last 10 versus 10 so uh, this was the this must have been the must be the seventh attack that i'm showing you guys then so i hope i didn't miss anything but uh yeah, I actually did not write down the uh, Tower 10 attacks I wanted to watch prior to recording this. Usually I write down all the attacks I want to record and watch with you guys, but um, since it was only two Tower 9s and all the rest Tower 10s, I thought we would just go through the Tower 10 map from bottom to top and check out all the attacks. So I hope I didn't miss anybody. If I did, apologies, but it's going to be enough attacks for this recap. Anyways, uh, if I get got anything, we everything we are going to be watching... Um, nine attacks this recap so that's already one more attack than i usually do and um yeah while i was rambling on about that we have already seen a very nice funnel by daniel over here who was able to get pretty much his entire kill squad right into the core and also able to take out that uh, uh, darn expo over there with a slither of hp left on it um, at this point lalo is being started of course uh, as stupid as I am, I zoomed away from the spot where Lalo starts. I definitely should have known that, but uh, I didn't. So, <laughs> um, there goes the haste spell. I'm hasting in those middle balloons. The other balloons that are hanging back uh, towards 6 o'clock are just slowly going to take out cannons and bomb towers and all that good stuff that does not harm balloons at all. There goes the haste spell. Hasting the middle balloons forward once again. The other ones are slowly and painfully going to take out that Inferno Tower. We have Heal Spell right after, so no Inferno left at this point. Definitely makes for some nice healing. Right into those two remaining Wizard Towers. And the Haste Spell right in between the Wizard Towers. It's going to be able to take both of those guys out. Boom, boom, there they go. And they are down. And only a tester left and a nice amount of balloons. So overkill right here by Daniel. Very, very good attack. I'm gonna give a uh, second MVP of the war to him because uh, he's uh, always very supportive uh, online for very long times on Discord, helps out with a bunch of stuff. So, shout out to Daniel, great guy to have on the team as well. And he's an elder now, so congratulations to that. And um, yeah, great to have you on board, man. And with that, we're gonna check the results. So, um, Town Online performance we had about five scouts. Um, Cold September had to dip twice. Um, Town, Hall 10 Town Hall 10 performance, very good on our side, obviously 7 10 v 10s they had 1 10 v 10. Um, 10 versus 11, we took 7 hits to, uh, no, we took 8 hits to clear their 5 11s, they took 7 hits, so they outperformed us a little bit. And we left 1, 2 10s on the board, and they obviously left uh, 3 more on the board. Um, as far as dips goes, they outperformed us 11 versus 10. We had only 4 out of 9 uh, 11 versus 10 attacks successful, so very poor performance by our town 11s, including um, yours truly. And went 11 versus 11 once when the war was already decided, so could have grabbed one more star maybe, but um, yeah, decided to go 11 versus 11 with that. Um, and Cold September went 7 out of 10 for dips, so um, we went 4 out of 9, they went 7 out of 10. Both teams not exactly perfect, but they were a little bit better, so. Um, yeah, in the end, 3-star victory percentage was uh, also in our favor, so would have won it anyways. Um, relatively uh, commanding victory, I am going to call it. Um, had our 11s been a little bit better, it could have been even more clear. But yeah, that's going to be the war, so thank you to Cold September for the matchup. Really enjoyed warning you guys, as always. Looking forward to our next matchup. And yeah, until that time, I will see you all later. Peace out.